Short time ago, I spoke to NPR's Leila Fadel from Cairo. Leila, welcome. So what's, what's known about what finally led to this ceasefire? Well, at this point, um, really the major sticking point that we were seeing last night was the issue of the blockade of the, Ga of the Gaza Strip. And basically what they did to get past that hurdle was delay the issue completely. So even though we have a cessation of violence on both sides, they basically put off discussions of the easing of that blockade for 24 hours until after 24 hours of this ceasefire. And then Israel has agreed to discuss easing the restriction by, restrictions by land and sea into the Gaza Strip. Well, so that's interesting. So this really is a short-term or, or, or short-term issues being dealt with now. And you're saying they're going to come back and they, they are agreeing, they are, t they are going to talk about longer-term things? Well, yes. Basically, I think the way it's being described to us is as a start and not an end. Um, this basically was a way to stop the violence. I mean, Gaza has been under intense bombardments for eight days, more than 140 people killed. Um, of course, Palestinian militants have been firing rockets into Israel. So this was a way to bring this to an end now. And then once the ceasefire holds for 24 hours, they'll talk about a much bigger issue, which is the blockade of the Gaza Strip, something that, you know, the Gazans have been living with for years now, and Israel says is necessary to protect their land. But the Palestinians say this is starving us out. We need freedom of movement. And so that's a bigger, that's really the bigger issue, and it's only then that we'll be able to see if this really is a deal that can hold. Now, what was the role of Secretary Clinton, or how is this being seen there? Is it a, is it a, a, a Egyptian-led uh, agreement, or, or one brokered by both Egypt and the U.S.? This is really being seen um, as an Egyptian brokered deal. I mean, the president here, President Mohamed Morsi, is the only person involved that is actually speaking to both sides because they have contact with Israelis through the security channels, which they've had for years. And also, they are in contact with Hamas, which the predecessor of Mohamed Morsi, Hosni Mubarak, was not in touch with Hamas. In fact, they wouldn't speak to them at all and often closed the Egyptian side to journalists and blocked that on the other side as well. So the difference now is that Morsi was able to speak to both Hamas and to Israel and actually mediate the deal. That's really never been possible before. Of course, without American influence, this would never have come to pass. They are a lot, in speaking to Egyptian officials and in speaking to Palestinian officials, everybody here said, we really need the Americans to lean on Israel. And only when Hillary Clinton came to the region did a deal come to fruition. And finally, just even in the next uh, day or days, is it clear how this is enforced? It didn't seem to be in, in any language other than sort of leaving it to each side to enforce the deal. Right. It's been very simple. Um, Hamas has, has agreed to control all Palestinian factions. Nobody will fire into Israel. Israel has agreed to stop the bombardments. At 9 p.m., things went quiet. Now, um, Israel, the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, did warn and say, we're ready to ramp it up again if there's one breaking of that ceasefire. So basically the idea, it's an honor agreement. Each side will stop. All right, Leila Fadel of NPR in Cairo. Thanks so much. Thank you. Shortly after that conversation, I talked to Shira Frankel of the Times of London. She's in Tel Aviv. Shira Frankel, welcome. Uh, what are you hearing from Israeli officials you're talking to? Did they get what they wanted, and do they think this will hold? Uh, the Israeli leadership is definitely trying to portray at this point a feeling of success to the Israeli public. We've heard from spokespeople from Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, from Defense Minister Ehud Barak, that they have achieved a lot of their goals, that being a ceasefire agreement with Hamas in which they promise not to continue firing rockets uh, from the Gaza Strip into Israel. They also, the, on a military level, they also say that they've managed to take out a lot of Hamas's long-range rockets. Uh, that's something that at the very beginning of this military operation, Israel's, Israeli officials promised uh, the public here. Now, in the meantime, today there was the bombing in Tel Aviv. How much is known at this point about who did it and and how they were able to do it. We've heard a lot of different groups take responsibility at this point, and we don't know yet who is responsible. Israeli officials say that they're still looking for the person behind it. They've had a couple suspects that have been apprehended, but no one has actually been named as the perpetrator of that attack. What we do know, and that's from Israeli police, is that they came from the West Bank, uh, and at, at about two minutes past 12 o'clock here, which was just at the time where most people were taking their lunch break, 
they threw a bag onto a bus that was traveling inside the city of Tel Aviv. A few minutes after that, the bag exploded, uh, causing injuries to people on the bus there. Now, let me ask you about Gaza, because I know you're also talking to sources in Gaza today. How, how are they seeing this agreement? What, what, what are they saying about it and, and its prospects? We're seeing a lot of celebration in Gaza. I just got off the phone with a friend of mine in Gaza City. He said that it's odd for the last few nights. He hasn't been able to sleep because of rocket fire. And tonight he can't sleep because of the celebratory gunfire and fireworks uh, all across the Gaza Strip. He says that there's a real sense of victory and achievement there. Uh, for some Palestinians, that's because they managed to hit cities in central Israel like Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. For others, it's more the recognition from the Arab world. In the last week, we've seen pretty much what's a diplomatic whirlwind for Hamas. They've had visits uh, from, from uh, countries in the Arab world. They've had a visit from, the, from Arab delegations. Uh, their standing in the Arab world has really risen in the last week. And I think that a lot of people inside Gaza and, and across this region are going to be looking at this as a real sort of achievement for Hamas. And finally, Shira, you know, we've heard earlier in the program that many of the important longer-term uh, issues here the blockade of Gaza and other things were put on hold, basically, that it will be taken up later. What have you been hearing on both sides about the prospects for addressing those kinds of issues? Um, what we've understood from Israeli officials is that this ceasefire agreement is actually in two stages. The first is just the cessation to violence. It's only in the later stages, which probably aren't going to start for the next 24 hours at the earliest, that the two parties are going to be negotiating other things. Uh, so along the list of things that we were items we were provided earlier today was uh, changing the buffer zone around the Gaza Strip, easing the blockade of Gaza, uh, reestablishing the Rafah crossing between Gaza and Egypt so that Hamas and the people of the Gaza Strip can have can sort of normalize trade relations, uh, the stopping of rearming of militant groups in Gaza. There are a long list of items that both sides want to see addressed, but that's not going to happen for quite some time. Um, part of the, the issue that I think both Israelis and Palestinians have had with the ceasefire agreement is that they feel that those issues should have been addressed before the ceasefire was established. Today in southern Israel, there were protests in cities like Sterot and Beersheba that have come under fire. And people in those cities really seem to object mainly to the fact that Israel had not established and sort of hammered out the terms of that agreement before agreeing to the ceasefire. All right, Shira Frankel in Tel Aviv. Thank you very much.